Hello and welcome to Higher or Lower, brought to you by SpreadX and Odds Checker. I'm your host, George Ellick, and I'm a bit smug today after <laughs> results last week, but I'm joined by my esteemed <laughs> guests and competitors, Dan Worth from Who Scored and Jack Wright. But let's, you know, I think we should start this week by having a little look at what happened last week, should we? Oh, what a great idea, do you remember? Because yeah. I was, you know, I had a couple of weeks off, I mm. came back and suddenly I was bottom of the leaderboard. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Rightful place in the top now, seven out of eight from me. Um, only those late Chelsea goals uh, in the total goal minute stopping me from having a full house. I'm a 59%, apparently. 58%, the odds checker. Um, viewers on social media, 56%, Dan, 54%. Ouch. I think you and I went against each other for basically every single Pretty much. selection. So one of us was going to be happy. Yeah. Um, I'm glad it's you. You deserve yeah, it off it was, the, uh, it started time well, off. It started well with the, you know, the Leeds win on Friday night against Leicester. Yeah. And then Chelsea um, helped by a couple of red cards, maybe? I think so, definitely, but I yeah. Think, you know, it's always going to be feisty so. with, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. Potch and, and those games. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm top of the tree at the moment, but loads of time to go, you know. It's only November. I know. Yep. Exciting times. Can't get too excited. But the good news is that all four of us, including you guys at home, are getting above 50%. So um, I've said in the past, you know, well done the traders, maybe, in this respect. You need to be better, lads. <laughs> yeah. Um, as ever, we are previewing the weekend's action. We've got a couple of games we can look at in the Championship and also across the Premier League as well. Before we get into it, there is a new customer offer. So if you haven't got a SpreadX account, uh, click on the link below. There's a bet 25, get 50, a range of free bets you get in there, including some of those markets we'll be talking about here. And the premise of the game, if you're new to higher or lower, is I will read out the midpoint of the sell price and the buy price on SpreadX spread betting market. We will say if we think the makeup, so the total result at the end of the game, will be higher or lower, and then we will win or lose based on that. Um, starting with Friday Night Football, as we did last week in the Championship. Yes. A game no love lost between these two. It is Blackburn Rovers against Preston North End. Preston had a brilliant start to the season, unravelling a little bit, um, but Blackburn with a big win against your boys. Uh, <laughs> surprise, Sunday. surprise. So you've seen Blackburn and Yondal Thomason's uh, team close at hand. Uh, they are favourites for this one at home. Uh, it's 0.45 to sell, 0.65 to buy, and the midpoint is 0.55. So higher is a Blackburn win, lower is Preston or draw. Three, two, one. I can see in there now, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've all gone higher here, so we all think Blackburn are going to win. Uh, Jack, given that you saw them uh, tear your lot apart, <laughs> it was 11 v 11, um, you can tell us why. Why they tore us apart, I can tell well, you that. But no, I'll go on to this, this, this move on from that. Enough, no, we so. haven't. No, no. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, just, I'm going with a better current form, really, as the first starting point. I, I thought this is yeah, quite a tough one to call, given local derby, Friday night, great way to start a Friday night. You're it's weird, because it. they, they normally say that a, a proper local derby yes. shouldn't be able to kick off in the evening. No. Yeah, we had... Chelsea Spurs on, on Monday night. Monday. You've got this coming here. Yeah. The ten, I'm, it's yeah, also, we're also seeing red cards being overturned. I feel like football's been turned on its head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has. What, do we even know what's going on? No, you did no. last week, obviously. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so, of chaos. <laughs> um, uh, Blackburn, four wins in the last five. Uh, was the kind of, say, swaying facts for that. I'm not even counting last week because, you know, they'd won that before they even kicked off. <laughs> well, I certainly won it by 15 minutes on the clock when they were uh, two up. But um, depleted side as well. They looked impressive, but also I'm not going to read too much into it because virtually everyone's looking impressive against Norwich at the moment. Um, obviously, extra incentive here as well, the fact that if they do win this one, they will go above Preston, who are at this moment in time in the last playoff spot. So I think that gives, gives them that extra incentive should they need it. Um, and Preston won winning eight, so they're kind of the complete opposite at this moment in time as far as form's concerned. And also won their, sorry, lost their last three on the spin away from home. Be it tricky ones against Ipswich and Leicester, um, but Hull, which I'd probably put in that kind of Blackburn category. Um, I'd also say that Blackburn have now kind of gone to where they should be. They, they, I think they were underperforming their, their metrics at the start of the season. Uh, they're now expected points is 10th. They are 10th. So I think that's now starting to come, come good. And looking through the, uh, the main parts, goals scored, goal shots, Blackburn dominate Preston in all aspects other than one, which is um, goals conceded or expected goals conceded. So I think by the looks of it, Blackburn should get plenty of chances. Sammy Smodix obviously has started the season extremely well, joint top goal scorer in the league. Looked very impressive again uh, at the weekend. So um, good on that side of things. I think they'll have plenty of chances. This game tends to have goals. It becomes a bit of a shootout. I think that only means Blackburn are going to win it. 
Some people are apparently sitting on some triple figure prices for Smodix Top Gun Square and Championship. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Is that, is that Morse Magnus? <laughs> <laughs> Dan? Uh, it's current form for me as well. Um, Jack's thorough as ever with uh, going first, so haven't left me with much. Um, Sammy Smodix, the, the key here for me, uh, he's on fire, undoubtedly. Um, hopefully there is lots of goals. He's in on the action as well if you're looking for a goal scorer bet. Look no further than him. Mm. Um, the home, oh, well, Blackburn are obviously at home, so that will play in their favour undoubtedly. Well, they've only won three and lost four at home so far, but oh, I'm not looking at that. I think <laughs> Blackburn win here. Yeah, I think Rovers win. Um, they're just a very good attacking side mm. in Smodics. They've got a key player, but also Joe Rankin Costello in great form, uh, Tyrese Dolan. It's a lot of good attacking players um, at kind of the peak of their powers, and people may have noticed against you guys late on. Scott Wharton, their centre back, was sent off, but that red card has been overturned, so he'll yeah. be available to play here. So, um, and it kind of feels like the kind of game where, you know, as good as Preston are, I think Blackburn will see a lot of the ball here and should be able to fashion chances fairly easily. Preston will fancy their chance on the break. There's no denying that because Blackburn do play a very high line, but the ease with which Rovers cut Norwich <laughs> open against a, a team low in confidence on Sunday, I think, suggests to me they might be able to do the same here in a game that means that obviously means a lot um, mm -hmm. to both sets of fans. So I, you know, all three of us here going for a Blackburn win and going higher there. Um, on to Saturday, and we're looking at Wolves against Spurs. This is the total goals line. The midpoint is 3.05, so effectively, if you're going lower, you're getting three goals or fewer. If you're going higher, you're going four or more. A lot of goals in Spurs games so far this season. Five, of course, in the Monday night football. Higher or lower, three, two, one. Wow! Oh, Full house. house. Well, you complained, Dan, a second ago that Jack took all your, all your points, <laughs> so you can go first here. Well, I mean, there's quite a few reasons why I, I'm going lower here. Firstly, it's quite high, right? You yes. need four goals. And it's a lovely a midpoint, that 3.05. Yeah, the, the, zero, the point zero five. If it was 2.95, you're really struggling. Yeah, it? I, I probably changed my decision. I wow. think it was 2.95. But there's so much uncertainty with Spurs, purely because who, do they have anyone fit anymore or <laughs> not suspended? Yeah. Do they have any defenders who, like, well, well it's going to be Hoiberg and mm. Eric Dyer. Maybe suggest I should have gone higher. <laughs> Um, Do you want to change? No, no, okay. no. Um, X though are on the higher. Actually, that's a good Ooh. good moment Fully to get that Twitter. in. Yeah. Um, so that hopefully is a nice differential for all of us against them, particularly <laughs> me. Um, both games last season were one nil. Um, Wolves are going to be without NATO, I think. I, I, I look. I don't know because there's so much None uncertainty. Of us do. As I said, I just think it's probably a one nil or a two nil win for Spurs. I can't, I can't see it going ballistic and just needing four goals here, I, I don't want anywhere near that. If you turned up here and started saying that you knew what was going to happen... I'd, I'd be beating you probably <laughs> if I did. Well, yeah, <laughs> or I think you'd be, be foolish. Um, yeah, I, I also think that the lower, like despite Spurs' obvious uh, attacking strength, most of their games this season have, have been under four goals. Um, you've got the 2-1 against Palace last time, 2-0 against Fulham, 1-0 against Luton, 2-1 against uh, Spurs. So it's only really the, the Chelsea game and the Arsenal game, dating back to the beginning of September, that have, that have kind of covered that goal line. And as you say, loads of, of doubts in terms of injuries mm -hmm. and suspensions. Wolves under Gary O'Neill, I think, are, are fairly solid. Um, yeah, I just can't. And with Madison likely out as well for Tottenham, that's another issue there too. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely am erring on. Although we know, we know that and won't change his philosophy, given that yeah. he played the highest line I've ever seen with nine men. Even if he goes down to five men, he won't change yeah. his philosophy. Yeah, yeah but he's going to find ways to bend the rules. Um, we know that, that mm. from, his, uh, from his interview. <laughs> what do you reckon? What do I reckon here? Well, I know or you reckon him, lower, yeah. but, but why? why? Why do you reckon? Pretty much for the exact same reasons you guys have just now said. I've nodded along to all of that. Um, right. Historical fans out there, um, none of the last six meetings between yeah, no. none of the last six meetings between the two sides have seen more than two goals, let alone more than three goals. Um, as you said, both ended one 0 last season. But this is Ange Ball, not necessarily not not loads and loads of goals. Um, two out of five lower for Wolves at home, immediately three out of six for Spurs away. Um, but this one, yeah, with the uncertainty around the Spurs defence, especially. I think also they aren't going to be, want to be labelled flaky Spurs. This is the new dawn, the new Spurs. They want to be strong and they want to make sure that they um, keep the back door closed here. The Madison possible miss. Would you risk him with the fact that you can give him another couple of It'll weeks? It'll be interesting with to see if he's, if he's going to be in, well, is he going to be in the England squad? Well, so you think if, if he's available, I mean, if 
he's any chance of him being available for this, then I think Southgate will want him in that squad. That was makes Agreed. a key decision. Mm. You, you leave him out of this one because he's still struggling. He's then got the, the free reign as such. And it feels like Madison, of all people, is going to be quite careful not to play a game and then pull out of the squad with, with an injury issue. Exactly right. Because um, he might <laughs> yeah. find himself not in Germany next summer, I think, mm. if he does Indeed. That. So, yeah. So, I think that that's key. Um, Monu, only one of the two venues that Spurs didn't score at last season there in Old Trafford. And Son Young min has yet to score against uh, Wolves. Uh, the most he's played against any side without scoring a goal in the Premier League. So, all points towards yes. a slightly low score and affair here. But the main thing is that line is super high. I was surprised to see it at effectively <coughs> going higher or lower than four. There is um, there was a very good stat on MNF uh, on Monday, surprisingly, about how Son <laughs> is third behind Messi and Harry Kane for overperforming his XG over the last five seasons, which is. Wow. Impressive, isn't it? Very impressive. Because as we know, sometimes um, overperforming, your, overperforming your XG, you don't have to revert to them. I mean, you can just be very good at shooting. This and I true. think in his case, that is true. We're going to talk mm. about someone who often overperforms their XG, or certainly is this season now. As we look at Sunderland, uh, who hosts Birmingham, uh, this is Jack Clark, who, you know, you mentioned Sammy Smodix, his joint top goal scorer in the championship. That is tied with Clark, who's on nine goals. Uh, Birmingham under Wayne Rooney, making a stuttering start. Sunderland have, oh, haven't scored in the last four games, I think I'm right in saying. Or maybe scored one. One of the two. Mm. Um, but Clark, obviously <laughs> the key goal scorer here. The, uh, his total goal minutes, this is the ac- cumulative amount of minutes that he scores in within the game, uh, is 20.5 the midpoint. So 22 to buy, 19 to sell. Has Dan learned this yeah. I, 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 I think we might. I think we might all be the same here. Three, oh. two, one. Yes. Guys, this is boring. Oh, it's my time, my turn to go first. I'll make it very quick. Clark has scored nine goals this season. Four of them have been penalties, mm. um, which is probably unsustainable for him to pick up as many penalties as they have been getting. Only five from open play. Those have come from 2.8 XG. So he's overperforming his XG. He is brilliant. He's a key attacking player off the left-hand side. I do think at some point it's going to be the turn of the strikers, Mason Burstow in particular, to probably start getting in amongst the goals. Um, I do fancy Sunderland to win this one, but I've just got to stick with the fact that Clark isn't just going to keep getting the ball on the left-hand side, cutting inside and smacking into the 20 yards. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm going for lower here. Jack? Yeah, similar. Um, they did score three goals in their last home game. That was against Norwich. Norwich. <laughs> uh, theme development to the show. Thank you for that, Dan. Um, and that was their only win in the last five. Um, but, so yeah, Clark was excellent in that game. Uh, another close-up uh, view of that. Um, he was up against Kellen Fisher, which you felt on debut. Uh, he was playing for Bromley last season. So, in at the deep end, was, was kind of coined for that experience. And, uh, yeah. Clark made the most of it, one assist, one goal, albeit from the penalty spot. As you said, that's um, that's a, a big factor in his goals. He's only scored two at home as well, one from open play and one penalty. And and that one from open play came in the first minute. And of course, we're looking at goal minutes here rather than will he score or not. So um, nine goals, four penalties, 15 games played. Um, he's hit the line in five and missed it in 10. It's a lower. Easy. Damn. Yeah, good. I'm just glad to be on both of your sides, to be honest. <laughs> well, I mean, I think for, for the sake of the content, we need to actually mix this up quite soon. Yeah, so. yeah true. Yeah, true. But um, yeah, obviously last week with the player goal minutes, I struggled. I think there's only one that I've hit right so far. So maybe it's not so good that you guys are on, on my <laughs> side here. Um, you, you guys have already covered it, but Clark's obviously in good form. He's got just shy of 40% goal conversion rate, which is super high, like right up the top of the league. and 78% shot accuracy. Um, but... Yeah, Sunderland attempted 25 shots against Swansea, no goals. Mm. I just wonder if Birmingham can frustrate them in general um, and sort of, as a result, mm. Jack Clark. Yeah. Do you think Birmingham will be a bit more pragmatic? Obviously, the no fear, no fear. didn't start very <laughs> well and I think there might be a little fear already. Yeah, it's interesting how they took the game um, on, on Saturday and went kind of two goals up and although they squandered that lead uh, against Ipswich. Maybe that will be the blueprint going forward. I mean, I, I, I more strongly believe that Sunderland are really good, and that yeah. their goal-scoring woes are not going to last very long. Like mm. they, have, they create so many opportunities in games. And one of these games where they didn't score was against Leicester, when they went to Leicester yeah. and you know created more opportunities than most teams will against them this season. Yeah. So Ethan Laird was back for Birmingham against great player. Yeah, against Ipswich, got seventy odd minutes, I think. So it's nice. his first start of the season. Mm. So I think that's. Going to be interesting, actually going to be very interesting watching that particular battle. Definitely. So, um, I mean, yeah. Laird will want to get forward where, where mm. possible. Um, a player that plays with no fear, I'd say. Uh, two markets now we're going to look at. They're kind of related markets, this one. So if we're, if we're both the same for the top one, we're going to struggle here. Um, Bournemouth <laughs> against Newcastle. Newcastle fresh off another defeat in midweek. 
uh, as they went to Dortmund who were beaten 2-0. Bournemouth, you know, after their big win against Burnley, dispatched comfortably by City last weekend. Um, this is the supremacy market, so the amount of goals by which the favourite will beat the underdog. Newcastle, the favourites here. The midpoint is 0 0.85, 0 0.85, so 0 0.75 to sell, 0 0.95 to buy. So a buy, a higher, is a Newcastle win, a lower gets a draw and Bournemouth on side. Three, two, one. Oh, there well we go. Done, George. Thank you. Some difference. And that wasn't deliberate. I, I mean, I don't have any notes to prove it, but that wasn't deliberate. <laughs> Holding that up? It wasn't deliberate? No, as in changing for oh, you okay. guys. Right, right. Predicting that you guys yes. were obviously going to go right. for the, the odds <laughs> on shot. You should play poker. I just think that Newcastle, as, as definitely good as, as they are, and there's no denying how strong they are, I, I don't think this is a fluke or a flash in the pan. The fixture congestion and the injury issues are adding up pretty quickly. Now, it's, it's mightily impressive how these players, these fringe players at Newcastle seem to come into the side and immediately hit the ground running. You know, Jamal Sells is the latest one to do it. Um, we saw them in the Cup at United, played players who hadn't played and five years and, and suddenly come <laughs> in and, and do incredibly well but there have just been a couple of very tired performances in my eyes um they were, they were obviously superb against arsenal but when you've got massive games like the arsenal game you've got back-to-back -back games in the champions league against dortmund of which they lost both I, I just think there might be a case here where they they're a bit half cooked um coming into this you know, Bournemouth starts the season has been very poor but they have had one of the toughest injury sorry one of the toughest fixture um, list so far this season. I think they've already played five of the top seven. I uh, haven't taken any points from those games, but even so, I don't think they're necessarily as bad as, as they're being made out to be. They beat, Bor uh, beat Burnley 2-1 last time at home. So I, yeah, I'm just thinking here that even though, certainly from like a probability-wise, with, with, the, with the high line, I'm taking a bit of a chance and I'm probably backing uh, the outsider here. I just think that this might be tough for Newcastle, especially having had a tough trip midweek, um, to come and, and, and easily win this one. Um, Jack, why am I wrong? <laughs> I think it's because it's Bournemouth. I was looking at ways to try and oppose Newcastle here, given pretty much everything you said, the injury list, the fixture congestion. Yeah. And I think pretty much, not any side, but most sides, the majority of sides in the league would have gone against it if Newcastle had been favourites here. But Bournemouth, with the three, side, or three other sides in that bottom four, I just think are... That much worse at this moment in time than, than than especially the elite, as you pointed out, where they've played already those top sides at the top end and they've fallen short, beaten Burnley, the only side that's below them, less shots than anyone else other than um, Burnley, more goals conceded than everyone else other than Sheffield United. It's kind of that trend going, and yeah. I just feel that Iriola's come into Bournemouth to try and play a certain way, and got the players to look to do that and they just don't seem to be able to carry that out and what I would say is that they're not quite getting the press right they're not quite getting the the tactics right and it is leaving themselves wide open and I think even with a sort of second string side Newcastle can go and really exploit that I think if it was against a tighter team a team that was going to be tough to break down then again I think that Newcastle might well struggle in it but I think that they will have a lot of opportunities to go and exploit Bournemouth who will press forward and, and look to attack them, and that could well leave them open. Gordon's obviously in good form, but more of him in a moment. But yeah, that's my opinion anyway. More of him in a moment. Uh, Dan, more of you now. More of me now, yeah. um, with very little to add. Eddie Howe returning to Bournemouth. Yeah. I think it'll be a happy return for him, because <laughs> I, I, I completely agree with what both of you are saying about Newcastle, and maybe they are showing some tiredness, and um, obviously they have loads of injuries but I just don't think Bournemouth are strong enough competition here to, to want to even consider taking the draw on. I think, I think Newcastle win. I've got to be careful because it seems like every time I'm quite strong on, I think they win, there's no other option. No other option. They find ways to lose. But, at a canter. Yeah. I'm, I'm staying away from all sort of strong <laughs> <Sound> words <laughs> here. I think Newcastle might win. OK. I think Newcastle fell very short. I'm sorry, Bournemouth fell very short when they played the, the top sides. You know, they beat... They conceded six and not scored against Spurs and Arsenal at home. And you know, going away to City and Liverpool is a different story altogether. But yeah, I just feel that they're in that, that kind of part of the league at the moment. And in a way, the defeat to Dortmund for Newcastle 
I'm taking them to bounce back from that, whereas they possibly could have been taken a bit easier if they then got the result they wanted in, in Germany. Same game now, uh, mm. in a similar market, so I, I have a feeling we know which way this is going to go. <laughs> Newcastle leading minutes. So this is the amount of time in the whole game that Newcastle are ahead. So if it was to be nil-nil and they were to score three times in the last five minutes, um, you know, it would only make up five, uh, despite the uh, measure or the margin of their victory. So yeah, 33.5 is a midpoint here. The sell price, 32. The buy price, 35. So basically, if you're going to buy here, then you think Newcastle is going to be ahead for lots of the game and lower, so that's higher. And lower would be... And not ahead for very much. Three, two, one. Yeah, <laughs> as the form book goes, for the same reasons I just mentioned, uh, I think it'll be really tight. I could see Newcastle, um, even if they get something out of the game, going behind in it, um, because as I say, I think they are a bit leggy and a bit tired. Um, you said more of Anthony Gordon to come. So unless you're going to talk about him in West Ham, Nottingham Forest or Chelsea City, <laughs> let's hear it. Uh, that is in this game, funnily uh, enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, looking at the, the options that Newcastle have got, Callum Wilson's apparently struggling with a look at the hamstring strain, which would be uh, a, a blow. But what I was going to say is Anthony Gordon's actually been kind of played in that more central role and it's been very positive for him in the last few games, scoring five times in 11 Premier League outings this season. So a very good return from him after probably a sticky start, well, sticky end to his, no pun intended, <laughs> time at Everton and, um, and then at, at beginning at Newcastle. So fair play on that. Um, this one... Yeah, I think if I'm going for Newcastle to, to win the game, I'm going to pretty much have to go for the fact that they are going to win it or be leading for more than half an hour. Um, stats don't really back that up, to be, to be honest. They've uh, achieved it in two of five away games at Wolves with 40 and Sheffield United, obviously, with 69. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the two games that are focused on really for Bournemouth, their home games have been Arsenal and Spurs, comparables, where both sides took the lead in the 17th minute and then extended it beyond that to nil, so um, a 73 line there, uh, which was very good. Um, I say Bournemouth, second highest shots conceded, 196, uh, second most amount of shots on target conceded. Um, with Newcastle having the best shot accuracy in the league at 44.3% and the best goal conversion rate, 18%. There you go. Dan, anything to add? Uh, Newcastle have scored in all but two of their wins this season. Obviously, they've scored. And their wins? Yeah, of their well, I have to score when you win. Yeah, in the first half. Right, there you go. Um, so you that's pause, nice. You paused at a bad moment. Though. Yeah, I did indeed. He <laughs> um, reeled you in. Yeah. It's all yeah. Part, part, of oh, no. part of the plan. Part of the plan. I've been done. <laughs> but as I mentioned in the last one, I think they win. So I've got to assume they score in the first half. Um, and to counteract your argument of you think that Bournemouth might go ahead, um, Bournemouth has scored five first half goals this season. And in four of those five, this market still would have made up, as in the opposing team, still have led for longer than... That can't be sustainable, surely. Yeah. Nice. Stand. Well, that is that is the question, isn't it? Is it sustainable? It's just a trend. It's, it's just a trend. a trend. It's a trend that's going to run. Bucket. Yeah. Um, right. West Ham against Forest Ooh. next up. And we're looking at bookings. Yeah. So these are booking points rather than total bookings. 10 points uh, for a yellow card, 25 points for a red card. If a player gets two yellows and therefore a red, they will make up 35 points. Um, yeah, 52 to sell, 56 to buy in this game. So the midpoint is 54. So if you are going higher, then you need six bookings or, of course, you know, what is it, four bookings and a, and a red. Um, a lower, you want there to be basically five or fewer bookings uh, or five or fewer yellows, I should say. Uh, the referee for this one, always important, is Michael Salisbury. Jack is the man who knows his referees uh, better than his best mates. So we'll get into him in a second. <laughs> Uh, but higher or lower at 54 for bookings in West Ham Forest. Three, two, one. Oh, oh my no. goodness. Once again, why are we so agreeing? Oh, oh. We need to start comparing notes. Yeah. <laughs> Jack. Yeah, I feel... Tell us a bit about Michael. What do you know about Michael? Michael Sons. What's his right. favourite... John. Favourite lunch? Uh, he likes a cheese and pickle sandwich. On, Interesting. Yeah, on white. Favourite drink? Uh, lime and soda. Who does he support? He support. I can't tell that. Uh -huh. I can't give you that information. <laughs> I tried to get out of you, right? Yeah, can't give you uh, that information. It, why is he going to give fewer than fifty-four booking points? Because uh, he had a very agreeable cheese and pickle sandwich prior to the game. Yeah. But no, exactly. I feel this might well be a, a week where it's been more about kind of your strategy of how you play in markets than absolute hard and fast stats. So, for me, this market. And Sam Tyrby taking notes here. He loves the bookings market. He said this last <laughs> time around. So when he's ready for that next time when he's going to stand in. I'm never going to be ill again. <laughs> so, never. <laughs> Over well. to you then, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, so for this strategy, look, yeah, as you say, referees are very important. It's a case of are the teams going to 
have any kind of reason to be going at each other hammer and tong and seeing plenty of cards coming out. Um, and for me, I'd probably say that these two fit in that mid category, so they're yeah, not too bad at all. Um, West Ham home average is 53 booking points per game. They've hit the line here in two Close. of five uh, only. Uh, Forest away average is 66.67. So you look at the stats and go, well, this has got to be higher. Surely hit the line in three or six. So around about middle in. Um, last season, same managers. Um, the match day 25, so a decent part of the season. Relegation battle, it had all the ingredients for being a, a, a tear up. Um, Jared Gillette was the man um, manager, he wasn't, he was the referee for that one. Um, a slightly better average, 43.75 than Michael Salisbury's 25 this season, and he showed zero cards. Unbelievable, Ooh. yeah. Um, but it is the referee that seals it for me. He was one of the best last season. He was one that was on the short list that you go, well, want him to get one of the fiery fixtures. This season, not quite sure what's happened. Four Premier League games, 20 booking points, 40, 10, 30, an average of 25 booking points. Three League Cup games, 10, 20, and 20. Overall average of 21.43 from seven outings. Um, zero times has he shown 60-plus booking points. Will he continue the trend, or do all trends have to end at some point in time? They do, but will it be here? I don't think so. He also took West Ham in the FA Cup match in March at Man United and showed 30 booking points in that one as well. So this line is high. That's the, that's the kind of the crux of it as well, and it's only a line that I'd consider playing if this was two teams that were up there in the top end of the, the bookings market. Um, two card, top card collectors with a top three official, and none of that meets here. I can also help you out here by... Oh, thanks. Well, because, yeah, I mean, obviously last season his, his record was very good, but as mm. with many referees, you know, they work their way up through the EFL. Yeah. And in League Two from 13 games, he averaged 2.77 um, yellows per game. In League One, 2.22 and in the championship, 2.84. So, like, he, throughout his career, he's been a referee who doesn't give many cards. You can find these referee stats on whoscored.com, I should say. Um, so, it feels like last season, for whatever reason, was just a bit of an outlier. Yeah. And there's no real reason to think that he'll revert back to type. Um, also, on Who Scored, you can have a look at the discipline table, which tells you the amount of yellows and reds. And frustratingly, as you kind of alluded to there, Forrester, a sixth for discipline, for booking points over the season, uh, West Ham. Seventh, 28 yellows and one red. Nottingham Forest, 30 yellows and two reds. But generally, West Ham under David Moyes have been very, very low in that. And that yeah. is the way I could see it reverting back. So, yeah, I think of, of all of these, if you were to take one of these uh, selections away, I'd say the sell here seems to be the one. Yeah. Yeah. No, you are right about the discipline stuff. But I looked a little bit more at fouls per game, um, which kind of backs us yeah, yeah. all up with lower. West Ham 13th for fouls per game with 11. And Forest 15th with 10.8. So... They're on our side. Of all the refs who have officiated four or more games in the Prem this year, um, Salisbury ranks second bottom for average fouls, which is 21 per game. So, Let it go. Yeah, let it go. He's not given any reds yet. So Anyone going to sing? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Not quite yet. Um, all in agreement again. Yeah, I think so. And, and like I said, stats are obviously great as far as you, you're looking at individual teams to see what they bring to the table, but it, it takes two to tango. And we could have a side here, get five yellow cards. If the other don't get any, then we still go under, as is kind of highlighted by the fact that their match totals generally will go under this line, although they're, they are not bad contributors themselves. So that's what they they draw as well. Or we could just see what happened with Spurs and just complete head loss and two, two red cards <laughs> and we're all just... Yeah. Let's not go back anyway, to that. Anyway, can't happen again. Mm. The animosity isn't there and it's, it's mm, Uncle true. Michael. Uh, <laughs> um, finally, looking at the probably the, the highlight game of the weekend, Chelsea hosting Manchester City. Chelsea fresh with that 4-1 <laughs> resounding victory uh, against Tottenham. Uh, Manchester City obviously having won in midweek in the Champions League and also beating Bournemouth 6-1. Last time we've got a couple of related markets again here, so let's see um, if we if we all pick the same. We're kicking off with shirt numbers, mm. which is a new market um, for higher or lower up on Spread X, and this is the total cumulative amount of shirt numbers on the back of the goal scorers within the game. So Erling Haaland is Manchester City's number nine. If Manchester City were to win three nil and Haaland scores all three goals, then this would make up three times nine, which is. 27. Correct. Uh, if it was to be nil-nil, it would make up zero. If Chelsea were to win one-nil and Nicholas Jackson scored, he's number 15, it would make up 15. Um, if it was to be one-all, Jackson and Haaland, 15 plus nine, which is? 24. Correct. So there you go. That's how you have it. All no good for us. Oh, wow. 
You don't know what we're going to do. Well, so no good for oh, you. Spoiler alert. Yeah, that's all no good for spoiler me. Spoiler alert. Strat numbers here. 47 to sell. 51 to buy. So the midpoint is 49. Mm, mm, mm. Three, two, one. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. So I'm going to kick off here, actually. I'm going to take first run because I think that shirt numbers, a bit like total gold minutes, is a massive seller's market. Like I, I don't want to give, um, I'm, I'm probably wrong, but I reckon if, I reckon if you just <laughs> sold shirts in every game, you'd probably come out on top because it's naturally a market where people are going to look at it and, and want to buy it. Mm. But that doesn't mean that all, they all have to be sales. And we're going to get onto the total goal line in a moment. Um, but this game feels to me, all City games feel to me like they are... Um, generally going to be high scoring games. I know that Chelsea's defensive record is pretty good this season, or the XG numbers certainly are, but you look to the way that Spurs started against them on Monday and how easy they cut them open. City will be rubbing their hands at this. And then um, you look at the shirt numbers of individual players. Now, Haaland is nine, which isn't particularly high, uh, but Alvarez, who obviously didn't feature, who's probably their second biggest goal threat and, and might even play as number 10 here, is 19. Crucially, Phil Foden is 47. And he is a massive goal threat. He scored three goals already this season. He's someone who I think will play uh, certainly, uh, you know, in that final third and be a player who will get on get chances. City to win this easily. And Matthias Nunes, who could also be employed as a, as a number ten, is twenty seven. So, looking at those attacking players, and Bernardo is a player who chips in a lot. He's already got three goals this season. Is twenty. If you are of the opinion that City might win this and win this well, then I think you have to be buying here if you, if, if you're forced for a play. And as I say, Chelsea. Jackson probably their biggest goal threat against the high line, no matter what you think of his finishing ability, 15, which isn't low. So I'm begrudgingly going <laughs> higher. But you seem to think, Dan, that maybe this is an obvious higher. I don't know about obvious. Like you were for who scored. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 to be fair, I took the same approach as you as I've got all of the shirt numbers written down I here. thought George yeah. was about um, a Man City shirt while we were recording. <laughs> right? No, right. he was just looking at the shirt numbers. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you didn't really touch on the Chelsea players too much, apart from Jackson, who I know you're very fond of. <laughs> um, we've got the likes of Conor Gallagher, 23, Caicedo, 25, and most importantly for my argument, Cole Palmer yeah. at 20. So I'm not suggesting this is the case because I think City will win here and probably win comfortably. But if Chelsea are to get on the score sheet, I'm staying away from Jackson. I think Cole Palmer's probably the man. Staying away from Jackson? <laughs> yeah. Patrick Hero Jackson? Patrick Hero. He's got, he's got five goals. He's got more goals than any of the players you just spoke about there. Fair enough. I think I'm with Cole Palmer. He has... Lots of work to do. And he's on pens. Yeah. yeah. Three pens this season scored. Yeah. There we go. Mm. Done. There we go. Higher. Jack? Yeah. Um, pretty much the same. First question is, do we think there's going to be goals in it? You're right. I, with Man City, you can't think there won't be. Um, although there hasn't been too many goals in recent history here. This, I think, for me, that opening stanza of the... Um, what word? I think there's not much yeah. opening. A stanza <laughs> of the, um, the the Spurs game was that the eye opener as well, thinking, well, Man City could have an absolute field day here, thinking ahead. Um, and it, it, Foden holds the key, doesn't he? Because yeah. he can nearly knock this over on his own, and he has been in decent goal scoring form at the moment. Alvarez, you mentioned, has scored in each of his three appearances against Chelsea. Uh, so he'll go into it with confidence. And then there's that certain Haaland who can sort of double up his number nine number. Um, but uh, yeah. Jack, um, Jackson will have confidence going into that game. Cole Palmer on penalties against his former club as well. Extra mm -hmm. dynamic. And Man City have been conceding goals this season. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea get at least one. And um, I fancy Man City to, get, to win the game. So therefore, a 2-1, a 3-1 possibly. It won't take too much here for that, that number to go. As long as Harlem don't get all of them, then I think we'll be um, yeah, cruising yeah. over the line. Okay, finally, total goals. If either of you put up the lower paddle here, um, then you've got some serious faith in <laughs> Phil Foden or you probably shouldn't be on the show. Uh, total goals, 2.8 to is the midpoint, so 2.7 to sell, 2.9 to buy, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, obvious mm. this one. For, re for, for reasons we've already mentioned, Jack, I feel like it's quite stats heavy, so you can... To well, it's, yeah, it, it, it was mainly about that. So that Tottenham um, start, really, that 15 minutes yeah. uh, on Monday, which just looked like it was made for um, made for Man City to come in and do the same kind of thing. The space they had, the width they've got. Doku, we haven't even mentioned in that previous yeah. conversation. Number 11. That's Number why. 11. Yeah, yeah, mm. a bit mm, in it. So I was hoping, yeah, have a rest. you should have been given have a rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Replace a Grealish, who's 10. Yeah. Oh, mm. No good. Who can we bring in? Um, Rico Lewis. What about yeah, no? What about uh, Oscar Lewis. Bob? 
52. Rico yeah. loses 83, is he not? Yeah, but he doesn't play in the same position. Well, that's fine. <laughs> they can play anywhere. <laughs> they total football under yeah, 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 it? So we digress. But um, yeah, I, I'm still not buying what Chelsea are selling. I think that they are a work in progress still. I do think they'll come good. I do think Pochettino will get a tune out of them. I just think that they are a very young side at the minute. They are going to be uh, inconsistent. They did give up chances. And even with nine men, showed their kind of um, naivety as such that Tottenham had um, chances to equalise uh, late in the game. Mm. You know, Son had that chance. The couple of um, the dire one that was uh, marginally offside, of course. And um, Bentenko as well with, with the chance too. So I think there was a stat saying that um, Tottenham had seven shots to Chelsea's zero after um, Jackson put them um, two on up. So, yeah, I think the obviously pre- presenting chances to a side like Man City are on fire at the moment. Mm. The spaces between the lines and down the sides are made for, for Manchester City to, to wreak havoc. And uh, I just think that there will be goals in this game, simple as that. Havoc to be wreaked, mm. Dan? I hope so, yeah. I, I completely agree. X is with us. Although, interestingly, I should have send, said it in the last market, they went lower on the shirt numbers, which they're, they're expecting mm. goals, but Don't must, the market. must be must just be Haaland <laughs> scoring the three. Yeah. Um, City averaging over 2.5 goals per game, um, which, I mean, win, wins this market for us, yeah. right, if they, yeah, if they yeah. score three. Um, and again, like, I think those first 15 minutes against Spurs are so important here because mm. City can and hopefully will just steamroll. If they can get a couple goals to the good, like, there's, there's no stopping them yeah. scoring four or five. Um, cool. So let's hope that comes into it. And I'd also say that the Chelsea performance against Arsenal is important. Well, that was the other time they played a quality team in the Premier League and they were very good and scored two goals before then squandering that, that lead and, and conceding two with four yeah. being made up. So there's I'll, precedent. For, yeah, for I was surprised the lines that we've talked about today, the goal lines actually weren't the other way around. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think that would have been about right for me. That's how I see it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Very happy they're not. Total goals Indeed. there, 2.8. We're all going higher this week. It's normally us against each other. This week, it feels like it's us against the guys at SpreadX, which is yeah. interesting given what, how I opened the show. Um, <laughs> I'm letting myself up for a fall from grace here. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the Odds Checker YouTube channel where you can find plenty more episodes of Higher or Lower. Um, and if you haven't got an account already, go and sign up for SpreadX for all your spread betting needs. You can find a link in the description below where you have an offer of Bet25, get 50 T's and C's to apply. So check that out. And do remember that losses can exceed your initial deposit uh, when it comes to spread betting. Check out who scored for all of your referee needs and other stats across football ahead of the weekend to inform your betting and download the Odds Checker app for the best prices. Uh, Bookie offers free bets and tips up on the app there as well. Thank you very much to these guys. We'll be back again next week. Looking forward to that. Enjoy the football and please ensure that you gamble responsibly.